Welcome back, DP Review no, TV. No, I'm, I'm going to do this. Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. It's Jordan Drake host. here, and we're going to continue our ongoing series looking at the good and bad of different camera brands, largely because we got a freak uh, snowstorm in the spring. And I, I don't normally go sit there, and, and you just normally just sit there. So today we're going to talk about Nikon, which I'm very excited to do because the Z9 has completely changed the way that I look at the brand. Uh, very exciting camera. So I am going to be talking about all the benefits, and Chris here is going to be complaining about some things with Nikon. But I like all that Nikon's done we, too. I don't. We have really... established a format, so we are going to I stick to that uh, because I don't, I don't want to be revisit it. Cop. I will be good cop. He will be bad cop. Uh, so, anyways, I didn't introduce you. This is the Monk of Moroseness. The Dr. Downer, Grandpa Grumpy. Oh, I mean, I'll give you that. I have teenagers and I would be very grumpy if that That's were true. true. Cranky Chrissy Nichols is here joining me today. So let's get started talking about Nikon's autofocus. Mm. We've complained about Nikon's mirrorless autofocus for quite a while, but with the reintroduction of 3D tracking, things are a lot better. Okay, but Jordan, you're talking about one specific camera, their most expensive flagship, but you know, both versions of the Z6 and Z7 don't have the 3D tracking, even though they have updated processing power. The ZFC doesn't have it, the Z5 doesn't have it. I mean, yeah, you're talking about one small group of people. Everybody else is left in yeah, there. Yeah, but I really think Nikon keeps referring to the Z9 as their D3 moment. Uh, and what happened after the D3, they brought out the D700 that made a lot of those really exciting upgrades available for a lot more people. I expect the exact same thing is going to happen with their autofocus on here. Yeah, well, and I mean, the accuracy was fantastic on it. Interface was very easy to use. Sure. Uh, I what I really love the is interface on one camera. The one thing I really love is a lot of cameras have subject detection now, but the Nikon actually did a great job using automatic subject detection. So that means like you put it in 3D tracking for the vast majority of times, you're never going to have to touch that again. No matter what they do with the UI and you know even updating the old cameras, their, their Nikon lens lineup still has probably the slowest autofocusing motors. I mean, Jordan, remember when we reviewed the 800 millimeter 6.3, we loved everything about that lens and yes, it was pre-production, but the autofocus still did seem a little bit slow, pretty decent, but if there is room for improvement, that's probably where they need to do it. Well, I'm just looking at it in the same way like the Z9, their most expensive body has that great autofocus system. They brought out the new 400 millimeter 2.8 with a very fast autofocusing system. Hopefully we'll see that in more lenses in the future. So next let's talk about Nikon's camera lineup. Now at first glance, it looks like a wonderful fairy tale. I mean, you've got the Z50, the ZFC, you've got Z5, 6, 7, and 9. I mean, that sounds wonderful, but unfortunately the story doesn't necessarily have a happy ending. I think it tells a lovely story, Chris. I mean, in the beginning of the story, we got the Z5, an incredibly well-rounded entry-level full-frame body. Then you've got the Z6, Z7. It's like, are you more into video than the Z6 line? If you want high resolution, the Z7, if you want everything, you go up to the Z9. Very simple, easy to follow narrative there. Okay, the Z5 is a fantastic cam. It's excellent value for the money. Now the 6 and 7 are wonderful as well. However, when we reviewed the second versions, one of the main things that we said was it has double the processing power. And this is going to open up a whole bunch of future potential. And honestly, we haven't really seen that from Nikon. I mean, the firmware updates they came out with, you have to admit, are pretty minor. Oh, where they gave you 4K60. That's a pretty major upgrade. They're continuing to improve the autofocus performance, which is the big strike against those cameras. But if it's got double the processing power, why don't they just put 3D tracking autofocus into the 6 and 7? I think that would make a lot of users really happy. It would dramatically improve an interface for autofocus, which isn't ideal on the older okay. cameras, you have to admit. I mean, the Z9 is their Halo product. It brings a lot of people's attention to the brand, but you got to start to see that trickle down a little bit. I mean, I, there's probably no way they're going to get the autofocus performance of the Z9 in those lower but end the bodies. interface. But I'm going to have to agree. Yeah, I want that 3D tracking interface in those bodies if it's at all possible yeah. uh, and make those version 2s much more compelling. Now, while we're on that subject, I do think the UI is still ugly. I know that's not everybody's problem, but it is still ugly. And I think you should be able to change colors, at least customize it a little bit to suit different lighting situations. Or you know, maybe just don't like the color yellow. I don't know. But the other thing we're not talking about, we talked about these other brands, is their APS-C lineup. I mean, the Z50, ZFC. Do we ever recommend Z50s to people? They don't have the line of lenses to support it. It's not a particularly exciting camera. I have an unnatural love for the ZFC, which is effectively yeah, the same camera. Aesthetics. It's, 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 it's a very shallow spot. relationship. It's a very shallow love affair. Yes, I love her purely for her body. I'm going to be doing all the talking for the next category because Nikon Z lens lineup is excellent. I've been very impressed with what they've come up with.
So let me take you back to just a few years ago when the Z line was announced. And they were coming out with some 1.8 primes and some fairly uninspiring zooms. And the Canon RF line, they had like the 28 to 70 f2, the little bitty 70 to 200 2.8. And it looked like they had the more exciting lens offerings. But I think Nikon's done a brilliant job of fleshing it out since they brought out their awesome, you know, 2.8 trinity of zooms, which are outstanding. I love those 1.8 primes are just reasonably priced, but optically just fantastic. Okay. And that's an area where Canon really hasn't really hit yet. Look though, okay, I agree with you. What Nikon has come up with, I have no problem with. They've done a great job. Where I have a problem with the Nikon lens lineup is what they haven't come up with because there's glaring things missing. First off, not a single 1.4 prime lens to be found. No 28, no 24, no 20, like nothing. 1.8s, yes, but people are gonna demand faster primes. Where are the fast ultra wide lenses for astrophotography? Right. Those Nowhere, there, those right? There. No, you know what? They make a 50 millimeter 1.2. They make a 58 millimeter 0.95, okay? Yes. <laughs> but what they don't make is a fast 85, not even an 85 millimeter 1.4. They don't make a 35 millimeter 1.4. They don't make a 24 millimeter 1.4. I think that's a big glaring gap. Chris, those are pretty niche focal lengths. I think like what the mainstream is screaming for is for them to flesh out their knocked series. We gotta get the wide angle knocked, the telephoto knocked, just a whole series of F.9. You're being very ridiculous yes. right now. Nobody can afford knock. So, you know, here's the thing, Jordan. Their APS-C lineup also basically non-existent. They're ignoring that, right? And I know a lot of other companies are as well, but either support the format or let it go, right? Make the ZFC full frame, forget it. Otherwise, let's get some nice, cute little primes, 35 mil 1.8 right. DXs for their APS-C lineup. That would be great, right? I know that what they're doing is making FTZ adapters. The version two supports a lot of their legacy glass and they want to rely on that legacy legacy glass. But I'm just saying for the future, Nikon needs to improve on that, I agree. especially because there's no third party support, right? I mean, they're not really giving information for the major players, at least like Sigma, Tamron, Tokina, you know, to really make lenses. There are starting to be some, but they're mostly reverse engineered and those have their own issues. See, I said I was going to be talking the whole time, uh, but I guess you've just stolen my thunder there. Mm -hmm. The lenses that are available are very good and you'll probably be able to find something to make you happy. So next, let's talk about video. How do I get down on a brand that has done such a quantum leap with the Z9, not only in raw video capabilities, but also value for dollar. Well, you do it by looking at the other cameras, the Z6 and Z7, who are holding out their bowl for more video features saying, please, sir, I want some more. And then Nikon just says, what? Look, the Z6 II, Z7 II, those got 4K60 recording. And honestly, like the Z6 and Z6 II, if you're looking for a hybrid photo video camera, it's actually a pretty good option. Okay, but let's ask you a personal question, Jordan. If you had less than $5,500 to spend on a video camera, would you get a Z6 or Z7 for video work? Not just as a video camera. No, nah, so yeah, let's, let's uh, make sure the stenographer got that. Yes, yes. Okay, and uh, here's another question, Jordan. Um, waveforms. I know Love that them. the Z9 has Z9 waveforms. has them. Yeah, but why don't the Z6 and Z7 have waveforms? I mean, that seems like a, a very easy thing to transfer down. I'm sure that the dual processing power of those cameras can handle. In fact, we really don't have any advanced video assist tools on those cameras. And oh, even, that would be nice. And even on the Z9, did you or did you not complain about the waveforms? Did you... If it pleases the court, Your Honor, can we please roll that clip? We now have waveforms, and yes, I do wish that I could adjust the size and placement within the frame. Okay, yeah, that, I guilty as charged, I did complain about that, but it's so minor. Your Honor, guilty? He said guilty, guilty as charged. I mean, that's basically it, but I've got more. So we talk often about how important it is to have linear response manual focus on video yes. cameras. And then Which I can say, oh yeah, so Jordan, can you tell me, are there any lenses you can think of other than one 7200 2.8 zoom that supports the linear response manual well, focus? Well, not off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's some coming. Is that, be that's hearsay, Your Honor, hearsay objection. I, I rest my case right after the objection. Okay, you're done. I wanna talk for a little bit about why I'm so optimistic about Nikon for the future, and it is the Z9. I mean, the specs are fantastic on it, the 8K recording, 4K 120, internal raw recording now with the 2.0 firmware, but also I love the interface of it. Being able to use all the camera controls with the electronic viewfinder is something I would love to see in some other mirrorless models. And again, it's not like they're gonna throw this away. These video features are gonna work their way in, and 
I gotta say, like the Z9 is in serious contention for my favorite video camera, period, on the market. For $5,500, that's not that bad for a look, cinema camera. Look, <laughs> it's very compelling, and I think Nikon's got a very bright future in the video world going forward. I, honestly, off the record, I totally agree. I think it's an amazing camera, and I feel dirty even giving it a hard time. But you know, a lawyer's job is never easy. You're not a lawyer. Look, despite you trying incessantly to harsh my buzz, I am very optimistic for the future of Nikon's cameras. I mean, if we'd done this a year ago, I would have been a lot more concerned, but the Z9 really shows what they've been working on while that was all going on. And you know, in the off chance you can actually get one, your hands on one, then I think you'll be impressed. Everybody would love it. It's just, here's the thing, you're right. I mean, a year ago people did look at the Nikon lineup and they were kind of upset by it and they were kind of negative and pessimistic about it. And the fact is, the Z9 has come out, it is one of those products that then brings the world's attention to the brand and I hope Nikon takes that momentum and runs with it. But we still have the same camera sitting there that people weren't so excited about before the Z9, right. you included. So I just want to see Nikon bring some love to those cameras, you know, go with the momentum the Z9 gives them and then give some love to those cameras. And if they do that, then I think they got a great future going forward making new cameras with all these new improvements. The thing is Nikon can just look at the template they already have, just do what they did with the D3, the D700 and the D300. Just duplicate that again, everybody's going to be really happy with some of that great Z9 tech. But thank you, so, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, be sure to let us know, are you optimistic or pessimistic about the future of Nikon? Uh, make sure that you like this video and please, please subscribe because we're gonna be doing more of these camera good and bad in this series and you're gonna wanna check those out as well. Also, you know, you might've missed the ones that we did already about Sony and about Canon. Uh, the link is in the description below, watch those as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you all again very soon for more DP Review TV. I did it, I talked so good.